Okay, welcome. Again, this is for Math for Business and Finance and for Math Applications, and we're doing the Chapter 1 uh, Odd Number Drill Problems. Um, in our last video, we stopped at 119, 1-19, so this is going to start out with 1-21. So let me get there. Okay, 1-21. Right? So now we're moving on to division. All right. Now, I wrote it this way, um, just a, a quick aside. When you see a division sign, it's a line with a dot above and a dot below. Okay, but of course our keyboards don't have that. So for division, we use the uh, slash sign instead. Okay, so that's why we're looking at 810 divided by nine equals what? Now when we're doing this, we also have to we have to rearrange the information, okay? And we put it under this divisor thingy, whatever. It's been so long ago, I don't even remember what the name of it is. But anyway, um, the whole idea is when you're doing division, you create this and you write the number that's going to be divided. You put it divided into, you put underneath it, okay? And again, positioning of your ones, tens, and hundredths places is important. And then you put the number that you're dividing by on the outside. Okay. So if I saw it, this, this is the same way, same me has the same meaning as this. Okay. Just the same as if it said one, 810 divided by nine is equal to what these all mean the same thing, whichever way that you're looking at it. Okay. So just get accustomed to it. That's why, it's so internalized, I don't even remember the, what this thing is called, okay? So let's just leave it at that. Um, all right, so now to do the, to do the problem, all right? Um, with division, we start from the, le uh, the far left and we go to the right. So we take nine and we say, okay, can we divide nine into, into eight? Nine cannot go into eight evenly, all right? So we don't need it, we don't do anything. But now we look at the next number and say, okay, now, can 9 go into 8 and 1? In other words, can 9 go into 81? And yes, it can. So that's where we're going to start out at. Okay. So 9 can go into 81. Well, if you know, if you remember your multiplication, 9 times 9 is 81. Well, we put the 9 right above the 1 because that represents where we're starting at. Okay. So 9 times 9 is 81. We write it underneath the 81. And then we subtract, so we end up with a zero. Okay. Now we bring down our next digit, which would be the zero. And obviously, nine into zero, zero goes zero times, so we put the zero up there. So our answer is 90. Okay. Nine times 90 is 810. And uh, we can proof that out by checking our work. We can take the 90 that we arrived at the answer and multiplying it by the nine. Remember, multiplication and division go together, addition and subtraction go together. So when we're doing the multiplication and division, we could use one to check the other. So 9 times 0 is 0. 9 times 9 is 81. And we end up with the same, same number. Okay? And I hope that you understood that. But we're going to have another problem, so let's move on. Okay, 520 divided by 6. So draw my divisor, put the number I want, 520, and the number I'm going to divide by on the outside as a 6, and we move from left to right. 6 can go into 5, can't go into 5. Okay, so now we look at 6 going into the next digit also, which is, makes this 52. We ignore the 0 for now. So 6 into 52, it can go into that uh, Seven times is 42. Eight times is 48. Nine times is 54, right? Remember, six times seven is 42. Six times eight is 48. And six times nine is 54. Obviously, 52 is in between the 48 and the, the 54. Nine is too much, right? We can't subtract 54 from 52 because it's a greater number. So we have to uh, start with the 48. So 6 can go into 52 eight times, 
which gives us 48. And we subtract one from the other. So 8 from 12, 8 from 2 is, uh, well, 8 from 2 we can't. So we have to borrow um, 1 from the 5 and bring it over to the, uh, the 1 spot here. So 8 from 12 is 4. This is our remainder. If our remainder is greater than the number we're dividing by, then we haven't used a large enough number here. Okay. okay. In other words, let me let me just use another example. Let's say I had originally guessed and I had said seven. Okay. Well, seven times six is forty-two, and when I subtract one from the other, I end up with ten. Well, that means, you know, so 7 isn't big enough. Um, 6 can go into 10 one more time, okay? So we're always looking for a remainder that's less than the number we're dividing by, okay? And like I had said, if we had used 9, all right, 6 times 9 is 54. Well, we can't subtract 54 from 52 because it's, there's not enough there, right? So... Um, you're, you're, this is a guessing game. It's a trial and error thing, okay? Just like I did over here. So 6 can go into 52 8 times, which gives me 48. Uh, 48 from 52 gives me a remainder of 4. Now, I bring down my other digit, my next digit. And if there was more digits, well, I just keep on going through this process again and again and again. You'll see that in the next one, I believe. So now 6 into 40. Well, 6 can go into 40. We know 7 is too great because that's 42. So 6 into 40 goes 6 times, which is 36. 6 times 6 is 36. And we subtract again, and we end up with a remainder of 4. Now, our answer here is 6 can go into 520 86 times. Okay? And I have a remainder of 4. Okay, that's my answer. But I'm going to take this just one step further. Let's say we want to keep on working this out. Now, this is going to end up being uh, iterative. Okay, so 520, and I, I show my decimal place, and I show my decimal place here, and I add in another zero. So if I bring down a zero, okay, six can go into 40 six more times. Okay, which is 36, and I have a 4. Now notice I keep on adding a 0, and every time I add a 0, this is what is meant by iterative. It becomes again and again and again, and this will keep on going out for as many places as you want forever. It's going to end up being 6, 6, 6, 6, 6. Okay, and as a quick aside, the way we show that this is a repeating number, a repeating uh, digit, we draw a line over the top of it. So I actually would, I don't have to do all of this, okay? When I know that I'm going to have this repeating process, all I need to do is just draw a line over it. So I would write my answer as 86.6, and I would draw a line over the, the two sixes, showing that that represents that if I was to write this digit, I would write it 86.6666666 all the way to infinity. Okay. But my original answer is 86 with a remainder of 4. Okay. okay. If you didn't understand that, then, you know, just give us a call and we'll explain it to you. All right. 1-25. Okay. It says add without rearranging. In other words, just add up these digits as you see them. Okay? So 95 plus 310 is equal to what? Well, I look at my 1s. I have a 5 and a 0. It gives me 5. Then I look at my 10s. I have a 1 and a 9 in the 10 spot, so that gives me 10. So I write 0, and I'm going to have to carry the 1. Right? I don't. So I have 3 plus 1. And I don't have anything in front of the 95, so 3 plus 1 is 4, so my answer is 405. Okay. 1 27. Add these up without rearranging. 
Okay, ones, six and zero is six. Tens, six and five is 11. So I carry a one. Doesn't matter whether I carry it over to the nine or I carry it over to the six, right? Because I'm now looking at the hundredth spot. Okay, so one and six is seven plus nine is 16. So my answer is 1,616. Okay, I'm going to stop here and move on to the next video.